and using natural topography. Entrance and boundary. This is a willow, a willow uh, tunnel that you can make with willows. <coughs> this is music. You always want to incorporate music. It's great, kids. They don't have to only be indoors to play music. They can play outdoors with music. Pathways. Give them different abilities to get to one place to the other. Different ways, <coughs> different textures, different feelings, different sensory experiences. Edible gardens. We miss out so many times that we're not teaching kids about where does food come from? <coughs> How do you make it? How do you grow it? Let's, let's grow it. Then let's cook it. You know? All these things that we could teach kids from, a, from not only from a science standpoint, but from a safety standpoint. Softening the landscape. Again, getting away from just having hard rubber, concrete, asphalt, all that thing. Provide experiences for nature, plants, all that stuff that softens up the landscape. Design concepts. So you want to come up with a design concept. There's a number of ways of doing that. Drawing rough drafts, doing, doing AutoCAD. There's all different ways that you can kind of explore on how to build your outdoor classroom. I want to kind of show you a couple of sites real fast. This is a site up in, up in Northern California. And this is a sand area right here. And you can see that they have a water cap hooked up there. They have the logs as you talked about, and they're using these as little tables. And then they have shelves. You know why these shelves are so important? And what they, all they do is they put milk cartons, and they put it in there. So when the kids want to use the sand toys, they pull it out, put them back, and then put them back in there. And the sand falls all the way down to the bottom back into the sand pit again. It's not all over the place. So those are some, those are some easy ideas. This is one I did up in Escondido called Los Niños. And what we did was build a sand area. We put bamboo here. We put a tree uh, that had pods that fell out during the, during the winter time. We had rocks. We had boulders that the kids could not only use to climb on, but they could use to build on, to play things on, to run water through. This is, what, this is that same site. I just want to show you the before and after. So this is what it looked like before. This was all sand. It's a big sand area right here. OK? And that's all they had, just kind of stuff thrown all over the place. It was called succotash, is what I call it. This is what it looks now. Okay? So we need grass. Now, someone asked, who asked me about artificial grass? You asked me about it. You asked me what I thought about artificial grass. I prefer turf, real grass. But sometimes it's not possible. This was site was not possible. They had tried to go grass there for years. And what happened is after a year's time, it just became a big dirt. So we decided to do artificial grass here. And, and because of uh, uh, the economics of putting a sprinkler system and all this stuff, pulling all the sand out, putting a new soil in there, it was actually better that we, we did artificial grass. So we did artificial grass here. We, we had, this is the outdoor classroom with a shade structure over here. This is the deck with a tree that, a new, we planted three branding trees. And this is where they use it as a stage for reading, for dramatic play, for putting on productions and stuff like that. There's music over here. This is that sand area with all the rocks and boulders. There's a garden over here. And there's a little kind of camping area right here with logs and stumps right there with ornaments and grasses coming out. The kids can use it as a nature center. They can go out there and read. They can use it for science, all these things. There's actually bugs there. They're actually crawling through the logs and they, they look at the bugs and stuff like that. So it's really, that was one of my best, one of my favorite places to visit. Uh, so let's talk about the four keys to success. Provide ample time for free play. Create atmospheres and experiences that allow for risk taking. Allow for more independence and room to roam as they age. And allow them to fail. It's okay to fail. We all fail. But failure leads to success. And if you don't allow children to fail, they'll never experience success. Because we're always doing something for them. We're always finishing their projects for them. We're always letting them do their doing stuff for them, and they never experience the ability to be successful in life. And then as adults, that translates into that. Okay, when the environment is too dull, too predictable, or at worst case scenario, non-existent, children will go elsewhere. The TV, the internet, video games. We're giving children a sedentary lifestyle. We're setting them up for failure. Okay, that's my contact information. Uh, there's uh, a website, that's my information. If you're on Facebook, you can friend me. I have a great blog there that talks about all these issues, gives you daily articles, references, 